I'm Mark Ramsey. I'm talking to Steve Stockman. I love Steve Stockman. I've known Steve Stockman ever since he was a little tiny Steve Stockman, I think. I, I, yes. I, a little tiny, you know, creative genius Steve Stockman. Steve is, of course, best known among uh, radio folks as being the head of custom productions, but he is also now uh, widely known, uh, among other things, as the author of this fabulous new book called Shoot Video That Doesn't Suck. And this is an awesome book, Steve. Thank you, Mark. Truly an awesome book. Um, but I've got to tell you, the thing that makes you greatest in my mind is not the book and not custom productions, but the fact that you have Sally Field's phone number on your iPhone. I do, um, <laughs> although I don't, I have to say, I don't call her very often. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's funny because two weeks, the movie we did together has been running every 10 minutes on MGM's HD net this week. Uh, that's, that's fabulous. Uh, apparently, right? it's the only movie they have. I don't well, know. Well, you know, that's, as we well know, there are two ways to get distribution. One is frequency, one is reach. You're going the frequency route. Nothing wrong yeah, with exactly that. Exactly right. You bet. Um, how to shoot video that doesn't suck. This book's getting an awful lot of attention, Steve. And I guess from the broadcaster's standpoint, I have to ask you about that. Because you said to me before we started that the genesis of this book really uh, arose from conversations with radio people. Explain that to me. Well, you know, when you're a director, um, it's like being, these days, it's like being a, a doctor at a cocktail party. But instead of walking up to you and going, hey, could you look at this rash on my neck? People say, you know, I've got a video. I'd love for you to take a look at it. Great. So uh, a year or so ago, uh, my friend Eric Corman, who's a producer for, uh, or rather the director of the Bob Rivers show mm -hmm. in Seattle, uh, sent me a video that he had done. And it was, Eric is extremely talented. It was a spectacular NPR style, really great interview from an audio standpoint. And from a video standpoint, it was a complete mess. Um, and so I told Eric about it, and we talked about it a lot. And, and um, uh, then the next week, I happened to be going hiking in Joshua Tree with Bob, who's a good friend of mine. And Bob started asking me about video and about the website and all that. So when I got back to the hotel room after we had been hiking, you know, instead of surfing porn like a normal person, I surfed the web for... Um, books about video and what I found is that all the books that were out there about video were about the equipment and about how to plug it into your computer and about how many P's in your HD and all that stuff mm -hmm. and I wasn't really interested in that as a director you know what you do is you, you point and go could you move that over there and I don't care about the camera but what I spend all my time thinking about is how to make video more intriguing for people how to make it entertaining uh, and I realized that I'd been giving Bob this curriculum that I'd been teaching kids at a, a summer, summer Stars Camp for the Performing Arts, uh, which is a great nonprofit camp. I'll, I'll give you the link for that. And um, I had this curriculum. So I'd been telling it to Bob, and it turned out no one had written the book. So I started to put it together. Hmm. And, and the second radio thing that happened is I, I happened to be talking to Steve Goldstein at Saga Communications because um, we're friends also, and um, we were chatting about something else, and I said, oh, and by the way, I've got this great book that I've started the outline on. It's called How to Shoot Like a Hollywood Director. And he said, you know, I don't care if my guys can shoot like Steven Spielberg. I just wish they could shoot video that didn't suck. <laughs> I went, yeah, okay, that's a much better title than that's, what I had. It's a million-dollar contribution to your book title right there. Hey, I got him a free copy of the book, and oh, I acknowledge awesome. it in the back. Um, but let me ask you this. I mean, here we are in this era of YouTube, in this era of amateur, in this era of I hold up my, you know, mobile phone uh, to events and instantly post it. In this era of amateur anything that goes, uh, why does it matter um, to make the video look good? It matters because there's so much of it. Uh, we're uploading 48 hours a minute to YouTube. Um, plus all the other sites that have uploads available, plus all the professional sites that are out there, the, the crackles, the my damn channels, the uh, funny your dies, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And what's happening is, is because web video is 
has gone past the gee whiz stage where people go, oh my God, I can get video on my iPhone. And now we're at the stage where they go, geez, there's nothing on, right? So we've, we've gotten to a point where there's a market for this stuff. There's money for it. People like me are doing video for the web who wouldn't have done it 10 years ago because it wasn't either creatively or economically worthwhile. And so you're competing when you upload a video to your radio station's website, you're competing for attention with millions of, of amateurs, some of whom are gifted and some of whom are just wasting other people's time that you're competing with. Mm -hmm. And you're also competing with tons of professionals and major corporations. You are now in the entertainment business in a video way. And if your video isn't good, people turn it off. It takes about 10 seconds. It's like punching the buttons on a on a car radio, if they don't like the song, they're gone. Well, the exact same thing is true with video. If they don't like what you're doing, they will vanish. They'll be watching Family Guy faster than you can say, wait. So that's now, the problem. That, that's a good point because you say you're in the entertainment business now in a video way. And before we started, you were saying that a lot of the people who want to talk to you about this book, who want to interview you for this book, even for radio, uh, very few of them want to do it on video uh, via Skype or whatever to create both audio and video to create that additional dimension of content even when you suggest it to them right um, why I mean, first of all I agree wholeheartedly with your premise that radio is in the media business media is in the entertainment and information business and there is no such thing as a distribution channel called audio a distribution channel called video that are separate from each other it's all together now but are broadcasters beginning to get that at all, radio broadcasters? And if not, why not? It's a complicated answer. Uh, so, so let me try to... Uh, here's the easy part. The smart ones are starting to get it. Um, let me use Bob Rivers as an example. If you go to BobRivers.com, you will see that he shoots his morning show with multi, a multi-camera setup every morning and posts it. Uh, first, you can watch it live. You can watch it live, which is great, because mm -hmm. uh, I do. I live in L.A. He lives in Seattle. Hard to get FM down here, right? And then the second thing is that they they immediately cut pieces of it uh, and make them into nice bite-sized chunks for people who miss the show so that when he does the Steve Stockman author video, it'll be up there and people can consume it in a five-minute chunk uh, from the show whenever they want. Um, my friends uh, Lex and Terry do the same thing for their show. They stream it live. They cut it into pieces. They put a lot of video up on the web. Um, all of the broadcasters who are leading edge and smart and understand the importance of their brand in the real world are absolutely doing this stuff. And, and listeners are responding by becoming viewers, by becoming active participants in a, in a web community, um, by uh, really joining the uh, world that these radio stations are putting out there. Well, it's interesting you say all that because I've, I've pegged a couple of things that you've mentioned. For one thing, um, you refer to them as bite-sized chunks. What you're really talking about are the hits of the show, right? The, 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 the um, uh, hit samples from the show. Secondly, uh, you're talking about making them searchable, right? Because they're all properly mm -hmm. labeled, they're properly tagged. You bet. So now it's searchable in a Google context. Anything we put up that isn't searchable is invisible. And mm -hmm. third, you're talking about uh, shows that are content-based shows, and that's another one of the things it seems to me. You're talking about something that is built to create content, thus that content can live across multiple platforms, right? Yeah, and not only not only are are they creating content, but they're very cognizant of their brand relationship with their target customer. You know, they're very aware that, that the delivery of something valuable to their customer expands beyond the bounds of, of their radio show. And not to stray too far from video, but the, the guys who I know who are doing it the best in radio treat their radio shows kind of like uh, World Wrestling Federation treats their TV show on TBS or whatever. I don't, I don't actually watch it, so whatever uh, channel is is doing it, which is it's their way in the door. And once they're in the door, they have a lot of ancillary relationships with their target customers. Mm -hmm. They've got T-shirts, they've got 
pay-per-view, they've got tickets to their live events, and so on and so forth. If you go to, uh, just to use the two examples I use, Lex and Terry's site or Bob Rivers site, they've got uh, events, they've got ancillaries, they've got t-shirts, they've got all this stuff. So they're building a whole brand relationship with their customers, which keys off a lot of, of their video. They're using video to make that happen. So, in other words, they uh, attract the attention and they leverage that attention uh, in order to sell people things on what, I guess, Gary Vaynerchuk called uh, and, and even Adam Carolla called to me the second level, the next level, right? It's the video's yeah. free, but what you monetize around that video, uh, you're able to make money with because of the attention the video generates, right? Exactly. And then, but the, the real issue that, that I've been focused on for the last uh, year, you know, since I started writing the book is, how do you make video that someone will actually want to watch? You know, because if you, if you do a video, it was Neil Postman, not to get overly theoretical, but Neil Postman, brilliant philosopher, great, easy to read book called Amusing Ourselves to Death, which I highly recommend. Um, do you have a copy on your desk? I don't have a copy. No, I'm reaching for the coffee, but right. there's usually, a, 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 in my case, coffee is always closer than a book. Right, that's fair. <laughs> but that's yes, fair. I've read the book. Um, well, Postman said uh, he was one of the first to recognize that the job of television is to be watched, which is to say, if television doesn't work to be watched in the first place, it can't do anything else. You can't communicate a message. You can't sell something, you can't entertain them unless you keep them glued to the set. This is true in spades in web video because instead of, you know, we thought it, it was a big deal when, when Dish Network gave us 500 choices um, and the World Wide Web gives us millions of choices. Mm -hmm. And if you don't keep them watching what you have out there, they're gone. You know, a video that, that falls in the forest. Uh, with no one watching it makes no sound and we need now to teach people in our organizations how to do video that doesn't suck which it turns out is not particularly difficult um, getting good takes some practice but being not bad and not pushing viewers away is pretty easy and if you get really good then eventually you too will have Sally Field's phone on your on a phone number on your iPhone uh, yeah, well, that, that, uh, practice and luck, yeah. <laughs> the book is really good, and it's really, look, it's easy to read, it's visual. How about that? Because, you know, a lot of the people who shoot video aren't necessarily readers, Steve, if you know what I mean. Well, open, just the, open the front cover there. Yeah, i got to open the front cover, because this is awesome. Look at this. It's By the way, I remember, you remember the focus group days, Steve, when we would, we would test these things in focus groups? and Same artist, actually. Some, sometimes they would be like animated animatics. And, yeah. you know, the first, you would say right at the beginning, you would say, listen, everybody, before you evaluate this commercial, I want you to recognize I'm going to show you an animated version. This is not what it would look like when it's real. This is just an illustration and animation. And then what's the first comment at the end after you show them the video? Um, and the first question, what did everybody think? Well, I think it would be better if it weren't a cartoon. <laughs> That's right. There you go. And I can, I can see you saying that on the other side of the glass. I, can I know you can. It. You've seen it more than once. I have uh, nightmares. Steve Stockman is awesome, awesome, awesome. And this is truly a fabulous book. Please go out and buy this book. Hey, uh, can I, I shoot I, video that doesn't suck? What's the uh, URL, Steve? Uh, it's it's uh, stevestockman.com. Uh, is my website, lots of blog stuff. Let me also say that, you know, if you are a radio station interested in, hey, doing an interview, mm -hmm. uh, Kodak is one of my official sponsors. I have Kodak video cameras to give away. Um, Steve at stevestockman.com, where I can turn you on to my publicists, and we'll be happy to discuss it. Great. And uh, maybe if you're lucky, it'll be an interview with you and Sally Field. <laughs> 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 Don't hold your breath on that. <laughs> Steve, thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Mark.